let's get straight to the point. I switched from using the Sigma 18 to 35 with a speed booster to Mikey's Micro Four Thirds Cine lenses, mainly because of the size. Don't get me wrong, I love the Sigma 18 to 35 because of its performance and the ability to change focal length quickly. I even made it a par focal lens by adjusting the speed booster, but it is just a little too front heavy for my purposes when using with the GH5 and the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. When I first got the Mikey lenses, I got the 12mm and 25mm f2.2 cine primes. I actually forgot how light my whole setup can be before mounting the lens onto my camera. It was such a joy to be able to carry a much lighter setup to film, and that is very important to me. A lighter and easier setup definitely encourages me to film more. The Mikey Cine lenses are very very tiny. They are about the same height as a Micro Four Third kit lens with the lens hood on, just a little wider. It looks a lot bigger in the pictures, but it actually fits in my palm, and I have pretty small hands too. This is another advantage because now I can carry more lenses in a small bag or a backpack. Yes, I know the Sigma 18 to 35 is like a zoom lens that covers almost three prime lens focal length, but at least to me, I found myself sticking with one focal length for a while when I'm filming. I don't really jump between 18, 25, 35 continuously that much, but if you need to constantly change a focal length, then maybe the Sigma 18 to 35 is better for you. Another surprise when I first got the Mikey Cine lenses was how heavy the lenses are. They are not heavy heavy, but they feel solid and nicely weighted. Since the height of the lenses is very short, when you mount the lens onto your camera, everything stays center balanced. A lot better than using the Sigma 18 to 35 with a speed booster. This makes handling the whole setup a lot easier when filming. That also helps a lot when you are using your camera on a gimbal. It is much easier to balance the camera that is more center weighted. You will also be able to have better clearance between your camera and the gimbal motors too. That brings us to the build quality of the Mikey Cine lenses. They are very nicely built with full metal construction. They feel very sturdy and nothing is moving or wiggling when you handle the lens. Of course, it doesn't mean that it is unbreakable, but it will for sure last longer with good care. The only sort of cheap part of the lens is the front and back caps. They are just generic plastic photo lens caps, but I'm okay with that. I really like the matte black paint coat that they used on the lenses. The paint job was very well done and it makes the lens a lot more serious, if you understand what I mean. <laughs> But for some reason, they used different paint coat on the 12 millimeter compared to the 25 millimeter. The 12 millimeter is darker than the 25. Maybe it is just my copy of the lens. Luckily, it's not too obvious. The markings on the lens are just paint, so they might not last as long as the ones that are engraved onto more expensive Sony lenses. That's another thing Mikey kind of cheaped out on. Just try not to be too rough on the lens and it should be okay. Maybe don't put the lens in the compartment with other stuff that will scratch the paint off. The next biggest reason why I'm switching to the Mikey Cine lenses is the smooth focus ring with a long focus throw, more than 200 degree. You will have to try it in order to believe it because I didn't believe it when I was watching other people's videos. It feels totally different from photo lenses. It feels much better than trying to focus with the photo lens because the resistance of the focus ring helps you from accidentally changing focus too quickly. The long focus throw also helps you on that too. I rarely go over my focus point now with the Cine lens and it feels awesome being able to rack focus smoothly. The only downside of the long focus throw is when you need to focus between two points that are very far apart from each other. Sometimes you just can't rotate the lens enough to get to the second point. Even with a follow focus system, it might still be difficult. The focus and the aperture rings are basically at the same spot on all Mikey Cine lenses. That makes it a lot easier if you're using a follow focus system because now you don't have to change the position of the focus motor every time you switch lenses. Another advantage of using the Mikey Sunley lens compared to the Sigma 18-35 is the D-click aperture ring. 
a lot of people are saying that you can use it to change the aperture while the light of the environment changes, let's say from dark to bright. So far, I haven't had a chance to use it that way, but I love being able to go between the T-stops to get the exposure I like. With a photo lens, you can only go about a third of a stop, but not down to the micro adjustment that a cine lens can do. One downside related to the aperture when using the Mikey Cine lens is not being able to see the T-stop, which is similar to F-stop on your camera display. That is because the Mikey Cine lenses are completely manual lenses with no electronic contact to talk to the camera, but I got used to it pretty quickly. The next reason why I switched to the Mikey Cine lenses is because of its native Micro Four Third mount. Of course, I know that because the Sigma 18 to 35 is not made for Micro Four Third cameras, that's why I had to use an adapter to force them to work, and that's why I switched back to the native Micro Four Third mount. It feels a lot sturdier and more secured on the camera compared to using an adapted lens. Having a secured lens mount helps a lot, especially when you mainly use manual focus. When you turn the focus ring on a lens that wiggles, it doesn't give you the full confidence and it makes me feel like the lens mount is hitting the camera mount every time I do that. You can actually hear the metal clicking sound and I'm not sure if it will ruin or damage the mount on the lens and the camera eventually, but that was my concern. The last reason why I switched to the Mikey Cine lens is the price. The 12mm and the 25mm combined is about the same price as the Sigma 18 to 35 with the Filtrox Speed Booster, and I think that is very cheap when it comes to Cine lenses. That is also why I'm switching back to Micro Four Third because lenses are much cheaper. I know it is very hard to achieve the same shallow depth of feel of a full frame look with a Micro Four Third lens. But to me, the shallow depth of field is more of a creative choice instead of a deciding factor. I think the Mikey Cine lenses are able to provide me with a very nice separation too. As I said before, you don't need to blur out everything in the background when it comes to filming. At least to me, that's how I feel. You might be thinking the low light performance not being as good on the Mikey Cine lenses compared to the Sigma 18 to 35, especially with a speed booster. Yes, it is not as good, but the T2.2 aperture on the Mikey lenses is not that much darker compared to the f1.8 on the Sigma 18-35. I've been using it in a controlled studio environment, and sometimes I even have to stop it down to T2.8 because it is just too bright, so I have no complaints here. The Mikey Cine lenses are also very sharp even when it is wide open at T2.2. I've been using it for close-up product shots and they look amazing. I don't think I need anything sharper than that. The sharpness is very natural and I don't need to use any promiss filter to unsharpen it. I know some people want to talk about corner sharpness, but to me, that is not my biggest concern. Yes, the corners are a little bit softer compared to the center, but that doesn't really bother me. Talking about natural look, I found that both the 12mm and the 25mm Mikey Cine lenses are very neutral when it comes to color reproduction. I don't have to do almost anything in post-production to adjust the color. Just add a little bit of contrast and saturation and I'm done, which is awesome. The Mikey Cine lenses also have a very good minimum focus distance. I was able to focus on objects that are about a foot away, and that is very impressive. With a 25mm lens, which is equivalent to 50mm full frame, it can achieve almost a macro shot. The bokeh of the Mikey Cine lens is also very nice. When it is wide open, the bokeh balls stay nice and round throughout the T2.2 and T22 aperture. They are very clean and they don't have weird halo or onion rings inside the bokeh balls. Again, very impressive. Focus breathing is very well controlled with the Mikey Cine lenses as well. You can barely notice it even if you are trying to look for it. Chromatic aberration is not bad on these lenses too, at least not to the point that I need to fix it in post. The major difference between the 12mm and the 25mm Mikey Cine lenses is of course the focal length. I would say the 25mm is my favorite of the two with the most natural looking and better background separation. 
the 12 millimeter is a very, very wide lens that I will consider it as a specialty lens for things like landscape, real estate, or what I usually film, dance videos that I need to fit a lot of people in the frame. The distortion on the 12 millimeter is very minimal as long as you don't get too close to the lens. That is also the same case with other ultra wide angle lenses. The ultra wide angle will give you a very unique and interesting look and I like to use it from time to time. I would say the 25 millimeter will be on my camera about 70% of the time and the 12 millimeter will be about 30%. One last thing that makes me enjoy using the Mikey Cine lenses a lot, it's kind of a personal preference. They make my cameras look like a mini cinema camera, and I really think it looks so cool and cute. Hey, it makes me feel happy filming with it, so that definitely works for me. I feel like it is just like me wearing my $20 Casio watch that I don't get bored looking at the whole day. That's it. Those are reasons why I switched from the Sigma 18 to 35 to Cine lenses and my thoughts on the Mikey Cine Prime lenses. To be honest with you, I think it is an unbeatable value to get the Mikey Cine lenses for around $400 each. I'm planning to get one more focal length, which is the 85mm for the maximum focal compression because I already have a Siri 50mm anamorphic lens. If you're planning to start building a cine lens set for your Micro Four Thirds system, I would suggest you to start with the 25mm because of the natural look, then go for the 12mm and then the 50mm to complete the set. I know people are saying that Micro Four Thirds is fading out. I can't predict the future, but I'm very happy with my Micro Four Thirds setup right now, and I hope you do too. I might not have covered everything about the lenses in this video. Let us know if you have any question in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.